Hey guys, Squatch here. Today we're going to get into part three of our Dillon XL750 9mm load series and today we are going to focus on station one of our shell plate. And what die goes there? Anybody? That's right. We're going to be working on the sizing and decapping die. And again, we are using the three-piece carbide die set from Dillon and we're going to set this bad boy up today. So stick around and let's jump into it. So jumping into our tool head here. Um, Dylan uh, makes these very nice. Uh, they do number these for you. Um, but running this in a traditional fashion, you're going to have uh, station one, two, three, four, and five. And in station one, this is the station that sits right over top of the case inserter from your case feeder. So that is where our sizing and decapping die is going to go. As we work through this series, uh, station two uh, in, this, in this tool head um, is set up for the powder drop. So there's not much flexibility as far as moving that powder measure because of the fail-safe rod and um, the, the priming system is right below it. Um, I suppose you could you know, modify this to use a different style powder drop if, if you choose to do so. But uh, typically, running it the, in the traditional fashion, this is where your powder measure is going to go. In station three, um, this one is set up, and you see there's a through hole here. Uh, this is set up for your powder cop. Um, now, if you choose to do so, this would be a good station um, to maybe run a bullet feeder. That way you have your, your seating station here in four and then a crimp in five. Now, if you're hung up on running, you know, if you are running a bullet feeder and you must have this powder cop here, um, you're going to run your bullet feeder here and then run a combo seat and crimp die in station five, which, you know, I don't recommend. And a lot of guys wonder what this hole here is for in the center of the tool head. It's not just for a, a light. Um, if you ever run into your running rifle and you get a stuck case, you can access the center uh, main shaft here bolt uh, through this, this hole in the tool head. So let's get into setting this die up. All right, so I have my die here. And one thing I always do is I'm going to take that lock ring and get it all the way to the top. Now the first step in setting up this die is we're going to put it into station one. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to thread it in a couple turns and that's it. And then I'm going to raise my shell plate up by dropping the handle down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to use like a hybrid instructions here. Uh, Dylan instructions tell you to go ahead and thread the thread this down all the way until it engages the shell plate. I'm going to show you that. So again, according to Dylan's instructions, they want you to go ahead and thread this die down until it engages the shell plate, like so. And then they want you to lock. Go ahead and button up the lock ring. So again, according to Dylan's instructions, it says right here, uh, they want you to lock down the die at this point. And I typically, and, I, and I'm going to lock it down. However, you know, since we're moving through this entire tool head, we're locking it down there. I'm going to make my final adjustments and just double check everything um, as I start to fill these stations up. So I will confirm that my, my die alignment and everything's good. Once I get the subsequent stations full, I have a cartridge in the sizing die and then I have one uh, across in the seating operation as well. So when I get to that point, what I usually do is I'll just loosen that lock nut back up, get this tool head full, and then go ahead and do my uh, die snug up, you know, at that time. And again, Dylan's not instructing you to do that, but that's, that's how I do it. And again, this is just my method take it for what it is, but um, that's pretty much wrapping it up. So what I am going to do is I'm going to throw a cartridge in there and just throw it in the case gauge and make sure that everything looks as it should. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and check this, this die setup as it is right now. I'm going to take a nice uh, shiny process piece of brass here and I'm going to grab a little bit of uh, sizing wax. And one thing to note guys, you know, these are carbide dies, and no, you do not have to use lubricant. However, you know, even running the carbide dies, I always use case lube, and when it comes to running like my pistol stuff, 
I'll use uh, Hornady One Shot, and the reason being is it doesn't leave a sticky residue, and it really makes the press operate very smoothly. So once I have this case uh, lubed up, I'm going to drop it in my case feeder. And you're probably thinking, well, why, just, why didn't you just stick it in the shell plate? Well, I'm also using this opportunity to make sure that all my adapters and everything I put in place, that it's actually going to drop a cartridge into the uh, case insertion and into the shell plate where it needs to be. So let's see if it works. So we're going to cycle the press down. My cartridge dropped onto the case uh, slide adapter there. Full stroke forward. And you notice our uh, case feed ramp here has slid the cartridge into station one and into the uh, shell plate as it should. And now we're going to go ahead and run it up into the sizing die. You heard the decapping pin uh, snap there. And these have all been decapped so there wasn't no primer coming out. And then we're going to come back down. And then it's going to index over. All right, so we have our size case out of the press here. And we are going to use a Dillon Precision 9mm case gauge. So the way this works, this size cartridge should drop right in here. Slide out very easily. Again, drop right in. And it should be sitting sub-flush or flush with our case gauge. And as you can see, that's exactly what we're looking for. So we've got everything set up here on our sizing decapping die. So let's go ahead and wrap things up. All right, so that is gonna wrap up part three of our nine millimeter load series on this Dillon XL 750. And today we finished up station one on our tool head. And I'm gonna address two things that I've done that maybe will raise some questions with you guys. And the first one is, you're talking about deviating from Dylan's instructions. Well, we followed their instructions to a T. We ran that die down to it touched the shell plate. We snugged it up. And, and this, is, this is, again, just my habit, is always snugging up the die with what it's doing at that particular time. And I know with this progressive style press that as we start to fill that tool head up, that we will start seeing some deflection in that shell plate and that's just the nature of the beast. I know Dylan has designed this to um, eliminate as much of that deflection as possible but there always is some and I'm trying to eliminate all of that and then also confirm that my die is sitting appropriately centered up into that uh, through hole there. So I will loosen that up later just to make sure and snug it back up once the tool head's full. And that's just something I do. It's not in their instructions, but it's what I do. Now, the second thing that I said, and I've said this before, and I've, I've brought this up before, and that is we are using carbide dies. But hey, you don't need to use case lube on carbide dies. Well, you don't, and I do. And again, I use the Hornady One Shot, and the reason being is this press runs a lot smoother uh, with using the Hornady One Shot. And then also using the Hornady One Shot, the Dillon Hiccup from Station 2 from the uh, case expansion, which you guys, as you start running these presses, will, will figure out pretty quick. Um, that's just, and what that is, is the powder funnel sticking inside the case. So a little bit of lubricant, you know, seems to help that out quite a bit and so that's comment too that might raise some eyebrows but anyways those are those again guys these are my methods these are what i've done or what i do and what's yielded me some success along the way and uh, i hope this video helped some of you out and i hope this series is helping you new guys out or gals uh starting to reload on your dylan xl 750. if you guys have any questions or comments hit me up uh, on my email, squatchreloading at gmail.com, Facebook and Instagram at squatchreloading. And if you want to support the channel, find us over at Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash squatchreloading. I'll put a link in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video. And if you want to stay up to date with what we got coming up, hit that subscribe button, hit the little bell with notifications. And there you go. It's that simple. But, uh, that's wrapping this video up. So in our next video, we're going to get into setting up that powder measure, setting up the case bell, and 
it's going to be a little bit lengthy, but we'll get through it. So uh, until next time, guys, God bless.